So in this video, we're going to think about restriction enzymes, which are really important when we start to think about how we might uh, manipulate bits of DNA uh, in biotechnology and uh, sort of stick different bits of DNA together. Okay, so let's think about uh, the overview and then we'll go into some detail. Okay, so what we're going to think about is how we might use uh, restriction enzymes in a process uh, called molecular cloning uh, via uh, a plasmid. And there's another video on plasmids and plasmid design uh, that you can have a look at. Okay. Um, so the basic idea with a plasmid, so a plasmid is a circular piece of DNA. So I'm just going to show it as a circle. So there's another video that gives you the details of what's in a plasmid. Okay. So I've got a plasmid, uh, which we also refer to as a vector. Uh, so that's something that we can use to move bits of DNA around. Okay. So we've got our plasmid vector, okay, uh, which is going to be able to go into a bacterium, let's say, and be copied in the bacteria. So the bacterium will recognise that and be able to replicate the plasmid. But we might want to add to that uh, plasmid. Uh, we've got uh, DNA of interest. Okay, so that might be a particular gene that we've amplified uh, from another organism um, that we want to uh, sort of stick into the plasmid. Okay. So the principle of cloning is this, is we, first of all, um, we cut open that plasmid. Okay, so let's say the plasmid is four kilobases uh, and the piece of DNA we've got is two kilobases in length. Okay, so the first thing we do uh, is to cut both uh, things, so we cut the plasmid uh, and we uh, cut the uh, DNA, so that we, uh, the DNA probably won't be cut very much, and I'll explain why not in a minute. Okay. So first of all, we cut open the plasmid, okay, and then we basically stick the two things back together. So now we've got our plasmid like this with our DNA stuck into the plasmid, um, so we'd now have a total of six kilobases of sequence. Okay, so it's a cut and stick process. We cut the plasmid um, and we cut the piece of DNA in a very similar way and then we stick them back together. Okay, so the sticking reaction uh, is actually called ligation. So there's an enzyme uh, called DNA ligase that will stick things back together. Okay, the cut uh, is where we use restriction enzymes. Okay, so restriction enzymes uh, are enzymes that cut uh, double-stranded DNA. Okay, and these are these are naturally occurring enzymes. Uh, so there are natural uh, bacterial defence uh, against DNA viruses. So bacteria have uh, quite a few different viruses uh, that are DNA based uh, that want to come in and, uh, and harm the cell. So bacteria have learned through evolutionary time um, to uh, be able to cut up viral DNA uh, to protect themselves against viral infection. So all of these enzymes are extracted uh, from various different types of bacteria. Okay, so let's have a think about um, this cutting process because there's two different types of cuts uh, that we might have, which have slightly different uses uh, when we come to think about our cloning process. Okay, so there's two broad classes of restriction enzymes. One are what we call the blunt end cutters. Okay, so one uh, make what we call blunt ends, and the other make what we call sticky ends. So let's see what the difference between these two are. Okay. So, um, the other thing about restriction enzymes is they don't cut uh, DNA randomly, um, they cut at defined sequences. So they are sequence specific, okay, which makes them really useful in the lab. Okay, so each different enzyme uh, recognises a different sequence. So for example, a blunt end enzyme, uh, we'd have something like echo... RV. So they've all got these uh, funny names. So they've got you know, Echo RV, Echo R1, 
BAM H1. The first bit tells you which bacterium it was identified from in the first place, and this is just a code uh, for which one it is. Uh, so Echo RV um, recognised this specific site. So it recognises the sequence G-A-T-A-T-C, which on the other strand of DNA will be C T A T A G. Okay, so that's a six base pair site. And if you notice, the site is what we call uh, a palindrome. Okay, so that means that it's the same front to back. Okay, so if I read um, in this direction going forwards, G-A-T, A-T-C. If I read in this direction, because remember the DNA strands are anti-parallel, it's exactly the same, G-A-T, A-T-C. Okay, so it's what we call a palindromic system. It's a uh, sequence. They sort of directly, um, um, they're di you know, it's directly reversible. Okay. So what happens when Echo RV cuts um, this sequence? Okay, so what happens is the following. So let's um, take our uh, take a new pen. Okay. So a blunt end cut, what that does, it cuts both strands at the same point. Okay, so it's going to cut in there. Okay, so when we uh, cut like that, uh, we'll result in, so we'll have GAT CTA. Okay, then uh, I'll just put this over here to show that it's been cut apart, A, T, C, T, A, G. Okay, so with a blunt end cut, then both strands stop and start at the same base pair. Okay, so there's a clean cut, T and A are directly above each other and that's where the cut is. Okay, This is different to sticky end, uh, so something like Echo R1 also has a six base site. Base pair site. So Echo R1 recognises this site, so it's G, A, A, T, T, C. Okay, uh, gives me on the other side we see T, T, a, A, G. So notice again that that's a palindrome. It's the same in both directions. Okay. But when I cut um, with uh, Echo on one, it cuts it in a slightly different place on each strand. So the cut for a sticky ended one would go like that. Okay. So when I separate those two things out, I get this. Uh, so A, A, T, C. Okay, so the strands are cut in a different place. Which results in these overhang, what we call sticky ends. And these are really useful to us because at that point, the base pairs are exposed. So that means that there's a fundamental difference between the two, okay? Uh, because um, only, uh, if we're trying to put them back together in a stick reaction, for a sticky ended one, you have to have something that's been cut with the same enzyme to stick it back together. This is now looking for the sequence AATT uh, in order to base pair to. It can't base a pair to just anything. It's looking for the sequence AATT, okay, if we want to stick things back together. Okay? So if we think about what that would look like, so uh, if here's, uh, now if what's in black is the plasmid from my diagram over here, okay, so black is the plasmid DNA. So we cut the plasmid with echo R1, okay. Um, but what we can now do is if we cut 
the DNA of interest with the same enzyme, with ECOR1. So it had these same O-hangs. They all now stick together. Okay, So if I cut the DNA of interest, in, which is going to be in pink, and that's got A, A, T, T, uh, C and G. Then there's the sequence in the middle of that 2KB. Uh, and then we've got G, C, T, T, A, A. Okay, so pink is the inserted DNA. Okay. Now we've got the two things stuck together in a very controlled way. Okay, so only ends that have been cut with our ECHO R1 will be able to stick back together. In the blunt end case, um, then that's not quite as specific. So we could put any sequence that we liked uh, in the middle there. Um, so if you had another blunt end, co um, uh, blunt end enzyme, uh, so I could put, I'll just top, show the top one, so we could put IOCCG. Uh, AT doesn't really matter, okay. Um, so the inserts can have any sequence, whereas here the insert must be cut with the same enzyme. So that means that you have a lot more control over what's going on when you use sticky-ended cloning. So we don't tend to, you can do blunt-ended cloning, there's times when it's a good thing to do. But we're going to think mostly about sticky-ended cloning because it gives you this really uh, highly specific process. Okay. So if you cut your plasmid and your DNA of interest with, uh, with, the, the, with the same uh, restriction enzyme, you get the complementary sticky ends. Uh, and then you can put them both back together, okay? Uh, and then you use the DNA ligase to actually sort of put them back together properly. You can't, it doesn't just spontaneously happen, you need a ligase. Mm -hmm. But this means in terms of uh, designing your cloning, then you can start to mix and match um, your, uh, your enzymes that you're interested in. So if want, I want my cloning strategy. So, for the cloning strategy, we need to understand two things. One is we need to understand the plasmid um, and what restriction enzymes the plasmid already has in it. So, uh, just any time these sequences come up, uh, then that's known as a restriction site and it could potentially be cut. So, we might, let's say, let's, we've got uh, ECHO R1, uh, we've got, a, let's say we've got NOT1, we might have another ECHO R1. So we might have an SCA1. These are all just different enzymes, and they've all got slightly different sequences that we're looking for. Okay. So the plasmid will naturally have um, some restriction sites in it. But what we usually do with plasmids is to also introduce what we call a multiple cloning site. So we have artificially added... Um, between five to 10 restriction sites. So we've manipulated the plasmid, so it has a place where you've got lots of different restriction sites, lots of different these different sequences, so you could potentially cut the, the plasmid at basically the same place with lots of different uh, enzymes. Okay, so let's say, uh, I'm just gonna draw that. So there's my multiple cloning site. So I'm going to have five enzymes in here. So let's say I'm going to have BAM H1, uh, and I'm going to have XBAR1, I'm going to have NCO1, I'm going to have KPN1, and SMA1. Okay, so I've got my multiple cloning site. I've got multiple different restriction enzymes basically immediately after each other. So I could choose which one of these I want to cut with. Okay, And this gives me flexibility. So let's have a look at my... Uh, DNA of interest, okay, so I've got my uh, gene of interest, uh, so this is what I'm going to insert, okay, so I could look at the sequence of that and work out what sites it's got inside the insert, so let's say uh, naturally in there uh, there's an NCO1 site and naturally 
uh, there's an SMA1 site. Okay, so these things will just come up. It's just every time that sequence happens to be there, that will give you a restri restriction site. I don't want to cut up my DNA to insert. I want to put the whole 2KB in it. So I definitely do not want to use NCO1. I definitely do not want to use SMA1. So let's remove those from my options. Okay, so I can't use those in my multiple cloning site because my, na my DNA naturally has those sequences in it. Okay, but that's okay because it's a multiple cloning site. We've got other choices. So um, if we haven't got BAMH1, XBAR1 or KPN1 in here, then that will be okay to use. So what we need to do now is to say, okay, well, we're going to use, uh, we'll pick two of those. So let's say we'll do BAMH1 and KPN1. What we now do is we artificially add those sequences to the end of the DNA. So uh, when we amplify it by PCR, we can play around with the primers and add uh, a little bit of sequence. So there, at the beginning of it, uh, I'm going to add a BAMH1. So artificially, I'm going to stick that on, uh, on the front end. And artificially on the end, I'm going to do a KPN1 at the end. Okay. So now, if I digest it, uh, I'm, fact, in fact, I'm going to use two enzymes. So I'm going to use BAMH1 and KPN1. Okay, so they're going to have the right sticky ends. Um, then, if I've digested my plasmid, uh, then it will be. So we've got BAMH1 and KPN1 on my plasmid. I've got the same on my DNA of insert. So I've got BAMH1 and I've got KPN1. Then I can ligate that together. So I've now got my plasmid in there. Two bits of DNA are stuck together. And there will be in the plasmid, it will keep with a BAMH1 and it will keep with a KPN1. Those don't, get, uh, those don't go away unless we actively remove them uh, through mutagenesis. Uh, BAMH1, sorry. Um, but now um, I've uh, used the multiple cloning site. Um, I used the sequence information to say which enzymes I could and couldn't use. I artificially added the right ones on the sequence here to match what was in the uh, multiple cloning site. And I've stuck it back together. So now I've got my 6KP plasmid that was all done uh, using these restriction enzymes. So the most important thing, they're cutting double-stranded DNA at defined sequences. And it's that defined sequences that makes them really useful. Can have blunt-ended, but usually we use sticky-ended cloning because then that means that we can mix, sort of mix and match the sites a little bit. Um, so we use the sticky ends. And then uh, in when we use a plasmid, we set up a multiple cloning site. So this is an artificial site where we've got lots and lots of different um, restriction sites that we can choose from. And that gives us the flexibility to choose which restriction enzymes to use to put our DNA into the plasmid. It doesn't matter which ones we use in terms of the final plasmid. It won't affect the structure or function of uh, the plasmid and how it's able to regulate, but it does mean that we can mix and match bits of DNA. We can move them around to do the cloning that we want to do.